So we'll start. Uh, we shall start now. Okay, so let me make it full screen. So good. So uh, mostly I'll be taking uh, 30 minutes max. Mm. Okay. So last time we unfortunately could not finish it because of some interruption, unnecessary interruption. <coughs> so how many are there? I could not see them all. So we too, Talway. Oh, sorry. I'm saying Nicha, Nicha is going to join. Okay, whoever is uh, interested, uh, yeah, she can. So, shall I start or not? Oh, you can start now. Okay. So, uh, today we will be continuing the discussion, whatever we have left from our last one. So, this is the quantum anomalous Hall effect in the magnetic topological materials. Probably it will, both the terminology will be new to, uh, I think, to all, all of you because. Uh, Apart from Sachin, nobody belongs to condensed matter physics. So we'll see what it is. So all these business have uh, been started all the way from, from James Clerk Maxwell. And uh, very unfortunately, it all started from his uh, serious mistake. So in his 1873 book, The Treatise on Magnetic, Electricity and Magnetism, this is what he had written. So it must be carefully remember that the mechanical force which urges a conductor acts not on the electric current, but on the conductor which carries it. By then nobody understood it in its in entirety, but, uh, but uh, a student, a PhD student in John Hopkins University, something around 1878, working, uh, was preparing a class note uh, under Henry Rolands. So he came up with this statement and was justified. What is that Maxwell wanted to talking about? Mm -hmm. So again, he established an experiment. We what we all know today, Edwin Hall, the person was the PhD student, and he discovered the Hall effect. Then the strength of the magnetic field was not that high. You experimentally was not possible to generate a magnetic field with, with, which strength can exceed more than three tesla because it's all about electromagnet based on the parallel of electromagnetic induction mm -hmm. concept of superconductivity was not in the imagination also by then mm -hmm. that is why the experiment what maxwell did by using a conductor was replaced by edwin hall by thin gold foil like rutherford did in his experiment mm -hmm. so that actually reduce actually uh, sufficient enough or it's a kind of a tricky experimental replacement where the conductor uh, the, the charge carrier can experience the very enormous orange force uh, uh, considering the availability of the magnetic field and thereby Hall effect was discovered and you know by definition you just apply take a current carrying conductor apply a magnetic field perpendicular to its direction as a result of which you can end up with developing a transverse hall voltage across the two perpendicular edges. That's what okay. the hall, hall, hall effect is. Okay. And, this, and this discovery fortunately gave him a professor position at Harvard University. So, so this, is, this is the beginning of the uh, new era of the condensed matter of physics. In fact, the hall effect is known as the queens of the experiments in condensed matter of physics. Mm -hmm. so, uh, this is the outline of my talk. So that was the sociological story associated with the today discussions. So this is the introduction. And then mm -hmm. we'll see the interplay between the band topology and magnetism, then experimental investigations. Then we will go to the quantum anomalous Hall effect followed by the QAHE in short, quantum anomalous Hall effect from magnetic topological material, then future perspective and its applications. Mm -hmm. So you, you, whoever are there in, in online now, you please feel free to ask a question and stop me anywhere you like. There is, a, it's a, not a class or any such thing. You can ask. So this is what I was talking about. This is the experiment of what uh, uh, made the Edwin Hall, a very famous physicist across the globe. You can clearly see this is the perpendicular magnetic field. 
and the, he is is actually measuring the potential difference across the two different edges and uh, uh, you can see the positive and negative charge then anomalous hall effect but remember gold is not a magnetic material as i was mentioning the experiment was done by edwin hall so if you replace a non magnetic semiconductor by a magnetic semiconductor a very similar kind of effect has been realized but here the magnitude of magnetization was really high and the contribution from magnetism was really non negligible that's why it is known as anomalous hall effect the usual hall effect the contribution from the lorentz force plus the magnetization already present in the sample putting it all together is known as anomalous hall effect and then spin hall effect is generation of spin current from the charge current it's a bit advanced so in order to know this you have to have an idea about the quantum physics so it's an intrinsic attribute like charge mass to every elementary particle and and uh, uh, we'll discuss it maybe uh, maybe in the later talk not for today's talk so coming back to the uh, quantum version of this hall effect now here you take the sandwich of two semiconductor the interface between the two semiconductor will be two dimensional electron gas and put that ultra clean interface under an extremely mag strong magnetic field at a very low temperature and the result of which you will end up with the quantum anomalous hall effect or in precisely it is also known as integer quantum hall effect and it was discovered by von clausing in 85 so what he did and this orbit you can see the dark lines across the edge of the sample these are known as skipping orbit and the this circular orbit are known as landau orbit quantization and you know from the very elementary definition of quantum physics you just apply Uh, a very strong magnetic field perpendicular to the electronic orbit it used to get quantized as per the quantum rule and this this orbital quantization is known as landau orbit and remember this landau orbit in between different landau orbit there will be an energy gap so it's a kind of an insulator but it's not as exact as usual insulator is but it's a kind of an insulator now it is the quantum version of anomalous hall effect here instead of uh, uh, classical analog anomalous hall effect here again you deal with the quantum regime but the material is magnetic in nature integer quantum hall effect here the semiconductors are generally non magnetic in nature let's say for example silicon and germanium but if you do replace them with the magnetic semiconductor you again will get the quantum counter part of the anomalous hall effect which is known as quantum anomalous hall effect okay and these are state so spin hall effect i i just simply do not want to get into because it's bigans and moreover it's not the matter of today's talk hello yes 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 just continue okay okay so now uh, i just want to spend two minute on this because it's a totally new concept we know from six or intermediate days what is the phase transition phase transition is something where energy changes takes place or state changes takes place or order parameter changes takes place so these are the different phases of the same concept which has been represented differently at the different standards so generally it's a topological phase transition uh, it's a kind of phase transition where the state of a matter changes its phase from one to another by closing the energy gap that is known as a topological phase transitions and the topology is a geometrical concept you know it is associated with the geometry and uh, it's a branch of mathematics it's a bit advanced also uh generally if you if you deal with the matter topological phase transition will only take place when there is a change in energy gap or there is a closing of energy gap say for example 
Suppose I just want to go from silicon to vacuum. Suppose I am holding a semiconductor in my hand or you being a physicist or an experimentalist, put a semiconductor on your experiment table and around your semiconductor, there is air around it. There is an air. So the simple question is, are they topologically equivalent, air and silicon? You will, you will simply imagine, oh, this professor might have gone crazy. How he can say that silicon is equivalent to an air but in terms of terminal of topology or by definition of topological phase transition they are equivalent so that's what i am saying so if you see this is the football and this is the ice cube so they both are topologically equivalent and they do not go to this number c equal to zero c equal to one it's a bit mathematical hello yeah, please continue. Uh, Is anybody asking me something? Uh, Never you asking. What is topological? Actually, Charlie. Sorry, sorry. Can you please uh, tell loudly? Uh, what is topology? Okay, what is okay? It is, it is associated with the curvature of a geometrical material, or or it's associated with everybody which deal with its uh, geometrical aspect. So, okay, before you get to know about topology, you need to know what is symmetry. So it is the sy symmetry, you know, it's a kind of operation which is the system invariant, right? It's a quite simple. Hmm. Either you rotate it or reflect it by mirror or uh, translate it. There are different operation which will leave the system invariant. Okay, if you take a, a glass of water and you rotate them, you do not find the difference. So water is rotationally invariant. Right. So it is rotationally yeah. symmetric. So by definition, symmetry is something, it is an operation which will leave the system invariant. Likewise, topology is defined, it is uh, the operation it's by which it, it is a physical quantity which will remain invariant while the system is under continuous deformation. Did you get it? Under continuous deformation, the physical the quantity. Quantity. Sorry? Hello? She is asking about quantity the meaning of continuous deformations. What okay, continuous, de deformation. continuous deformation. Let's suppose you are holding uh, a clay in your hand and you, you just want to make a football or you just want to make a cylindrical wire just to, but to make sure that you are not actually poking a hole in it okay so you just take a clay in your hand and try to deform it the shape you like to no matter what is the shape but but do not try to poke a hole in it the moment you poke a hole in it it will remain it will become topologically different and okay. if you if you really need to know by doing by making a hole in it Fine. how is it going to affect the topology then Fine. i have to tell little better technically okay hello okay sir okay sir like okay how how so, will, like would going to change the topology okay okay so what do you do there is a theorem called the gauss bonnet theorem okay so it is the curvature, the Gaussian curvature over a continuous surface. If you see that theorem by a book called uh, uh, Nakahara, Topology for the Physicist, I think. So if you see that, the, the, the integration or surface integration of Gaussian curvature around a closed surface is nothing but proportional to the number of holes. And the, there is a constant associated with the phi. So if you have actually done some elementary mathematics by curvature, uh, calculation of curvature in uh, 2D or 3D in your elementary class, if you remember. So if you poke a hole, uh, if you can remember all those mathematics, you can clearly see how is it going to change. That is a mathematical side. But being a condensed matter experimentalist, I can say you how by poking a hole is going to change the physical property of a material. That's what is the matter of discussion. Okay. Did, uh, did you get me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
if i can add something to what just prakash said uh, kanti said please 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 go ahead okay so first first thing is uh, when when i say two things are equivalent then mathematically i mean that there exists a bijection between the two sets so when i say two sets are the same there exists a bijection between two sets so when i say that the ball and the cube as as gyanti is showing on this page are equivalent then it means that there is a uh, some kind of operation so let's say i do some operation on the ball then i can and and the operation is something like i'll make some continuous changes in the ball i i cannot uh, make a hole through the ball then i can convert the ball into a cube or or for a simple example uh, if if you take a katori a simple katori in which you put sabji and and you take a dish the 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 one in which you put rotis so so if if you if you somehow deform the plate it will become it will become a katori but you cannot poke a poke a hole in the katori or the dish otherwise you will change the topology mm <laughs> Ah. So, so topology in in that sense, as Gyanti just said, deals with the continuous deformations. But but of course, I mean, if if you go into the mathematical part of it, I mean, it 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 might be very very abstract in the beginning. But 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 if you go to the mathematical part of it, it they'll say that there should exist a bijection between two sets. So if I say one bijection, thing, bijection, bijective maps. If if you recall your calculus, your twelfth class calculus. One one a function which is one one and onto is called a bijective function. Oh, मैंने twelfth में math frame पढ़ी है। अच्छा अच्छा okay okay ठीक है ठीक है हाँ तो ठीक है मतलब वो दो sets एक एकदम equal होते हैं मतलब उनमें एक तरह के वो है कि जैसे ऐसे कि अगर एक set में पांच से women हैं एक set में पांच और पांच बच्चे हैं तो हर एक माँ के लिए एक बच्चा है। हाँ वैसा हाँ तो वो दोनों sets उस sense में equivalent तो ऐसे यहाँ पे भी है कि हर एक point फुटबॉल के लिए एक पॉइंट है लेट्स से क्यूब पर कुछ इस तरह का एग्जैक्टली exactly ये नहीं लेकिन कुछ इस तरह का एक मैप है ठीक है तो ठीक है कोई और क्वेश्चन है क्या तो मोटा मोटा तो क्या हो गया हाँ 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 बस वही वही तो मतलब लेकिन अभी डिटेल्स में जाएंगे तो उंडराबरेट वे so but for for the timing so uh, i i think this much will convince you i believe <laughs> okay okay so so coming back to your second question c equal to 1 so that c equal to 0 or c equal to 1 is known as the topological invariant because whenever you are dealing with a physical property so you need to come up with a parameter in a mathematical way and that parameter has to be uh, analyze or critically reviewed and that parameter is known as here topological invariant in topological phase transition that parameter is known as topological invariant okay to be specific it is known as tknn invariant thales cometer nightingale and dingenes so c equal to 0 means you see either in football or ice cube there is no hole okay okay uh, yeah it's Here is topic of you can see there is single hole. One is in handle, another one here you can clearly see, right? So that essentially talk about how many number of topological invariant that actually body possesses. Okay. Hello. Hello. You know, did you get what he just said? I could not hear you. Uh, am I audible to all of you? You are uh, audible to me. You know, did you yeah, understand uh, what Gyanti just said? I think she has some issue in the internet. Okay, maybe. But but then you can continue. So okay, if, let if her come back. She has a question. She'll she'll just stop you now. Okay, okay. Let her come back. So so uh, uh, this is the thing. Yeah, what I was uh, trying to uh, convey. that uh, how can a piece of material which is solid in nature 
be equivalent to a vacuum but they are topologically equivalent as i was trying to convince you by gauss bonnet theorem that's what the topological phase transition is so on both the phase of the matter will be called as a topological equivalent if you are going from one phase to another without closing the energy gap if you are if you need to close the energy gap in order to get from one phase to another then there is a, a topological phase transition going on okay so now th this is what actually von kleising discovered and now coming back to our conventional band insulator you, you know the classification of material has happened based on the band topology uh, sorry band theory of the solid and uh, these are parabolic band you know valency band conduction band and uh, now this a state will come and this a state actually coming from this skipping orbit hello okay i can hear you i can hear you okay so this a state is coming from here so maybe i can uh, i can uh, try to tell you so this is a very important uh, point i want to mention people often uh, do not uh, answer this question why in order to realize the integer quantum hall effect you need to apply a very strong magnetic field perpendicular to this two dimensional electron gas because 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 uh, uh, by applying a strong magnetic field this lander orbit will become closed and once this orbit became closed electron cannot move translationally so that is why it will behave as if it is an insulator but around the edge you can see it couldn't complete its orbit thereby it ended up with a skipping motion and I thereby it produced yes uh, so so my question is is there a threshold before which this orbit doesn't close let's say if you if you don't apply five tesla magnetic field the orbit it's, it, it's a very good question it rahul by depends upon effective mass of an electron and the dielectric constant okay and anything yes. above that anything above 5 tesla let it be 10 tesla 20 30 40 tesla the orbits will always be closed it depends on that's what i i, I told that's okay. what i told because it will essentially be determined by the dielectric constant as well as the effective mass of an electron because the effective mass of an electron is, is very much differ from material to matter and so is the dielectric constant mm -hmm. depending upon that only you need to apply the threshold magnetic field above which you can clearly see the closed lander orbit okay Ab yes. above the threshold limit the orbits will always be closed yes yes okay. then okay. only then only if you do apply also a transfer a potential difference also electron doesn't move because they have already possesses a closed orbit mm -hmm. it's a kind of like uh, the electron is actually rotating about an impurity kind of mm -hmm. so maybe maybe we can discuss it towards the discussion section so mm -hmm. So this edge orbit, uh, this uh, this skipping orbit actually ended up with this edge state, the red line. You can see from conduction band to valency band, there is an uh, there is a connection. So this is coming from the skipping orbit, which is which is at the edge. Okay, and these two two skipping orbit means means two two edge state is coming from the uh, for, for two different spin orientation. Okay, so the difference between trivial insulator. And topological insulator is that uh, the topological insulator, the electrons do not have a specific spin reorientation mm -hmm. and momentum. They have random momentum as well as the spin orientation. There is no one to one relation between the spin and the momentum. But in case of topological insulator, there is a spin momentum locking. And that spin momentum locking is the output or byproduct. Of spin orbit coupling or band inversion, which is not the case as, as far as the band insulators are concerned. So that makes it totally different from the trivial insulator. So here you can clearly see we have started with from a trivial insulator, let's suppose there, there is a finite energy gap, then you apply the band in the spin orbit coupling. So finally they will come closer, and at a particular k point, they will touch one another. And at this point, they will known as semi-metal because there is very low density of state at this point. And then they will actually overlap and then band splitting occur and the process is known as band inversion. Some part of the conduction band will go to the valency band and some part of the valency band will go to the conduction band. And these are two different S state depending upon their spin orientation. Okay, so you can call 
metal, topological semi-metal is just the halfway between the trivial insulator and the topological insulator. Okay. And what does this arrow represent? Which one? This, this, this one. This, this dotted arrow. Uh, topo spontaneous symmetry. Top, topo, topological surface states. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Topological surface states. Okay. So now this is this is the another way. This is conduction band. That's what whatever I told it. Another pictorial representation to make you feel for the uh, statement. So now. What are you doing? Uh, this is one part, but what is the uh, importance, the interplay between the band topology and magnetism? Now we have seen, the, I just want to clarify one statement. What do you mean by band topology? Band topology means putting it in a technical way. As far as the electronic wave function remain in the Hilbert space and Hilbert space topology is really doesn't have under uh, have not undergone a topological phase transition. So topologically, the Hilbert space is intact, no matter what is the perturbation from the outside. The electronic band structure is topologically protected. Okay. Now, whatever situation we have analyzed a little before, has it doesn't include the magnetism into consideration. So now, if you incorporate the magnetic interaction into the system, the system became much more tougher richer to study from the physics point of view as and as well as from the technological point of view so this quantum anomalous hall insulator means here i just want to say look so by definition topological insulator is a kind of material where conduct surface is conducting but the bulk is insulating but now if you apply a magnetic field in the close proximity or if you incorporate a magnetic dupont, what sort of physics you can expect? The, the thing will essentially break the time reversal symmetry. You might be knowing about the graphene. Graphene is the first two-dimensional Dirac semi-metal material discovered so far, two-dimensional Dirac. Yandhi, and yes. Perhaps you can say something about what is time reversal symmetry? Okay, time reversal symmetry, maybe let me put it in a simple way. So if you actually offer it, uh, or, or uh, let's suppose the best example will be generation of the magnetic field from a current loop. So uh, let's suppose how we generally use, uh, use current carrying conductor to create the magnetic field. So you take a cylinder or rotate the current carrying conductor in a particular way and allow the current to move in a particular direction, then you can clearly define the magnetic field by using Fleming's left-hand rule or right-hand rule, okay? So if you just reverse the current direction, the magnetic field will change its direction as well. So that is the breaking of the time reversal symmetry. That means if you uh, go from uh, past to future or future to past, the physical properties should not be distinguishable during its measurement. That is the time reversal symmetry means. But when it comes to magnetic field, it is the only, only what I can say, uh, um, magnetic field, it's a parameter, you can say. So this is the only way one can break the time reversal symmetry because the magnetic field doesn't respect time reversal symmetry. That means if you are creating a magnetic field from present to future, then the creation of magnetic field from future to past will not be the same. It will be in opposite direction, at least in that sense. Hina was asking something, weren't you Hina? You were asking something. Uh, uh, when you go from past to future, sorry, past to future or future to past. Okay. Uh, there would be some distinguishing something. There will be distinction, yes. So let, let's suppose, let's suppose you might have remember, if, if you uh, have remember the Fleming's right hand rule. So if, if your your fingers, the, except your thumb, uh, represent yes. the direction I, of the current carrying conductor, your magnetic field direction will be up, up right? Up, huh, huh. Yes, but if you just reverse it, it will become your left hand, let's suppose. If your current carrying conductor actually carrying current in opposite direction, your direction of magnetic field will be down. Will be 
right? Yes. So that's I was trying to tell that in that sense. If you have a begin with your experiment from from a upward magnetic field, and if you reverse the current direction, you will end up with a negative mag a downward magnetic field, right? Yes. So whatever was your present became your future, and the future became your past, right? Uh, how how past become future, future become past? Yeah. See, uh, okay, so you are getting confused with, I think, language. So suppose I, I have begun my experiment at 10 a.m. After two minutes, I have observed it's the magnetic field is upward. Now we have the experiment in opposite direction. So at 10, 5, you will find the magnetic field downward direction. Are you getting my point or not? At 10 a.m., uh, the magnetic field direction is upwards after 2 a.m. Yeah. So after two minutes. Yeah, so now you reverse the current direction. Okay. okay. So uh, okay. you can you cannot reach to 10 a.m. now anymore because that time has already gone by. Uh -huh. in, in that sense, actually in physics there is no nothing called past, future, and present. There is only thing called present. Okay. Okay. So in that sense, what I mean to say is. The magnetic field is something which doesn't actually leave the system time reversally symmetric. Maybe you can explain it more okay. using the, the example of electric field, like how electric oh, elect does electric field? No, no, no. I current and magnetic field is the best. I I believe. Okay. So maybe maybe if you, if you think there is a better way, you, you can explain. Um, Another way. I also cannot think of anything else. Okay, so uh, what I can think of right now is uh, looking at the Newton's equations. Okay. So in so so if you look at Newton's equations, they are uh, so how do you write them? Assuming that the mass is constant, you write you write them as f equals uh, m d two x over d t square. So you have two uh, time derivatives in there. So. Uh, so if so even if you make t goes to minus t because you are reversing time so still the form of the equation will not change because you have two derivatives there so still the equation will be f equals f equals m d to x over dt square so in that case we'll say that the newton's equations are time reversal invariant i mean there is that these equations uh, satisfies time reversal symmetry so uh, okay so here i just want to add on one thing Hena, Hena is asking, right? Am I correct? Shall I? Yes, yes. Okay, so the, the what Rahul Bhai said, the, the colloquially, if you, I want to put it, the falling of an apple from the tree to towards ground or upward motion of an apple from ground to tree, the trajectory wise, you cannot distinguish. Yes, huh. that's what it means. Even if okay. an apple is actually moving upward, it still respects that Newton's second law, uh, whatever Rahul Bhai has explained, m d square x by d t square. Okay. Okay. Yes. So that's what uh, that that means. It does actually respect time reversal symmetry. Okay. And but magnetic field do not. It will never. It is the only thing which never. doesn't respect. Never. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so. Okay, so uh, thereby the physics became really rich. The interaction between the band topology and interaction of magnetism or magnetic order. So here, the essence, the, the ultimate requirement or motivation behind all this condensed matter physics is, can we come up with something which could be technologically useful? That's what actually kept the research alive since the days of uh, Galileo or Newton, whatever. It is the only thing. Can we come up with something which could be useful and make our life a bit sophisticated or easy <clears throat> at least? So now you know superconductor, right? Superconductor is something which doesn't actually have any resistance toward the flow of current. That means it is the uh, timeless energy flow without any interruption. Once you set up a charge or a group of charge in motion, that's what is the superconductor. But very unfortunately, nobody has come up with neither in theoretical sense or experimental 
way how to realize it at room temperature you know it it's a very elementary i believe you know it hello oh hi yes sir ahina wants to tell, tell something no no sir Ah, you 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 know it, right? But very unfortunately, nobody has come up with any such material experimentally, and theoretically also people ha hasn't yet predict which material to probe into. Mm -hmm. But this is another domain of the condensed matter physics, topological insulator. As I told you by definition, it is the material which surface conduct electricity, and that flow of charge doesn't actually encounter any sort of scattering or resistance. So it is another uh, incarnation, you can say, of resistance-less uh, or power-less, uh, means uh, uh, no power-loss uh, uh, flow of the charge carrier. That means once you set up a charge in motion, it will remain in motion for all time to come, in principle. Okay? Okay, sir. That will resolve our uh, renewable energy resources problem for all time. It will revolutionize our society overnight. So this is the motivation behind all this research. So now coming with this, the, this is the importance I just wanted to mention. Okay. Now, how can you how can you measure magnetically topological material? So these are the different parameter or probe by using magnetization, by using current, by using voltage, by using temperature, and by using magnetic field. These are the different probes by which one can actually experimentally verify whether the material is magnetically topological in nature or not. In details, I will not get into because it, it needs a bit background maybe later on we will see but you can ask any question if you like yeah i just want to tell if you have uh, you have about the graphene right the people got the nobel prize for in year 2010 and it is the hardest material ever discovered and the strongest material a lot of very unique and rich physical properties high thermal conductivity very high strength after diamond and all that. But to what use it, uh, this material? Is? Have anybody used it uh, in any sort of technological application? Not yet. People have been trying the, uh, hard enough, but uh, hasn't been realized it in commercial way. So there are two things I want to emphasize here. The moment take a topological insulator, bring it close to a magnet. So how about it conducting surface state? It will not remain a conducting surface state anymore. There will be a formation of a gap, right? And due to the formation of gap, it can be useful seriously in condensed matter physics. But very unfortunately, the formation of gap proportional to the temperature, which is in milli Kelvin range, that means the topological non-trivial feature of the material will go away if you increase the temperature, let's say 50 Kelvin. So at that low temperature, it is almost of no use in our daily life. Mm -hmm. Okay? okay? So because magnetic exchange energy, you, you know that, that energy gap actually proportional to KBT and that if corresponding to that gap, your temperature can be tuned. So if that gap is really small in, in uh, milli electron volt, obviously you don't expect this gap to sustain or that physical non-triviality to sustain at a high enough temperature. That is the problem. And the goal of my research in IOP is to enhance this temperature. And how can I enhance that? I have to tune the material such that the band gap will increase. Reach. Once the band gap will increase, correspondingly, the temperature of its sustainability will go down, go up. So that, uh, depending upon the orientation of magnetization, either it can be called as churn insulator or quantum anomalous Hall effect. 
you can see the magnetization of the two layer. This is the topological insulator. This is one ferromagnetic layer. This is another ferromagnetic layer. But mind you, the orientation of the magnetic moment in both of those layers are parallel to one another. But okay, but here, if the magnetization are opposite to one another, they will become axion insulator. Okay. So this is what I am focusing on picture A. How to come up with the material of this feature where band gap is high and proportionately I will have the high enough temperature to sustain. Mm -hmm. What is QAHE and PME? Which one? This one? QAHE. Quantum anomalous Hall effect. Okay, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. and, and the topological magnetoelectric effect. Okay. This, and okay. uh, that equation has been written here. Polarization is proportional to magnetic mag magnetic field. Magnetization proportional to electric field. Mm -hmm. uh, what Rahul bhai? Okay. Uh, I mean, I I have seen this. Uh, I mean, I have seen this term. So um, maybe it's a bit. Uh, it it is not related to what I know already because I have seen. So if you consider, uh, for example, I'm not able to recall it right now. But but okay. So. Ch Maybe so you you, you are, have seen it in electrodynamics concept. Chan Chan Simon's term. You you are Chan Simon's term, and that is parity violating term. Right, right, right. This is dealing with uh, charge uh, conjugation and all that. Uh, that uh, who is that physicist? Uh, the Nobel laureate uh, who has introduced the axion into the concept of high energy physics. Mm. The person who has actually residing Einstein home in Princeton. I mean, I don't, I cannot. I have forgotten. Axion is the name of a detergent of America. So that person actually introduced this as a particle for a dark matter candidate. <laughs> that way, the person who has given the theory for the strong, strong interaction. Yeah, oh, I'm not God. able to how recall his name. I mean, yeah, yeah. How can I forget his name? Um, anyway, anyway. Mm -hmm. So that person only. So this is, the, if you look at the Lagrangian, this is the term one need to add here. Uh, to take into account the axial contribution to the dark matter candidate. So that uh, Lagrangian, uh, it's a high energy concept. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. The name itself, axion is coming from that only. Okay. And and churn and later means that you are some somehow dealing with the system that is parity validating. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Churn is coming from that. Okay. Uh, uh, very rightly said. Okay. So depending upon the this classification, the churn insulator and axion insulator is just the difference in magnetic uh, orientation in the magnetization, whatever I have shown it picturally. You can clearly see here there is a conducting edge state. You can clearly see, but here there is no such conducting state, rather it is a gap. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is a very drastic difference between these two different topologically non-trivial states. So now, huh? So, so, so is this correct? I mean, if I have understood it correctly, so the left one is a topological insulator, but not the right one. Is this correct? Because yes, because... yes. So this, this, this is though topologically non-trivial, but this will not possess quantum anomalous Hall state. The B one. B B will not possess because here the magnetization cancel each other out because they have opposite direction. <laughs> Okay, I have, I have one more question. So, so let's say you have some material. Let's say some material because I'm not I'm I'm not very conversant with the materials you use in your research. So let's yes. say let's say you take iron for example. Iron yes. may not be the appropriate material. So, okay. uh, whether so I mean, is it true that you can convert it to a topological insulator just by the way you make it? So, so the same so, so the same base material can act as I mean, I'm asking, I'm, I don't know at, at all about this. So yeah. is it true that by starting with the same base material, you can convert into convert it into the topological insulator or maybe you will not get topological insulator based on the way you made it? Is it It's true? a very good question. Once I was also uh, contemplating on similar kind of uh, thought that uh, can I really start to start with from a random one and end up with a topological non-trivial. The answer yeah, is yeah, yes. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, is it answer, true? <laughs> answer is yes, because it is kind of uh, John Mitchell asking himself, if SK velocity of light is 11.2 kilometer per second, can I stop light by any way? So that ultimately gave birth to the concept of black hole. 
सो लाइक वाइज सो आंसर टू दैट क्वेश्चन वाज राहुल भाई यू आर वर्ल्ड ट्रेंड विथ दैट रिगार्ड <laughs> what i need to do is i i have to concentrate the mass into a very small volume right that will mm-hmm. that in principle any sort of mass can be uh, converted into a black hole is it not okay okay true but depending upon the circumstances or experimental uh, facility limitation we may not realize that mm-hmm. but in principle what that is what mathematics says mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but in a very similar way let me start with from iron if i can sum up minus to convert it band and make it band to invert each other i will ultimately end up with uh, topological insulator what is wrong with that and moreover band inversion is not a sufficient condition it is a necessary condition mm-hmm. so uh, i am pretty uh, open and uh, i am optimistic that uh, i probably can end, start with from anybody or any material and uh, i can make it turn uh, topological non trivial mm-hmm. okay. but of course uh, this is what people are really searching for <laughs> yeah because magnetic space group is way larger as compared to the uh, crystal crystalline space group for for what material oh okay any, okay magnetic for any material okay. yeah yes okay. in that sense it's a very good question very good very good question so Uh, uh actually see the in order to realize this uh, many approach has been adapted so far uh, let suppose it, uh, le- let me start with from a topological insulator and uh, dope it with some magnetic element like we did uh, in my phd okay mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. start with from silicon carbide and uh, dope with some magnetic element and let's see how the spin dynamics is going on so but the problem here is the dopant will essentially give rise to the uh a uh, magnetically fluctuating domain and it is a, a, a non uniform uh, distribution of magnetic element it is always probable because whenever i am doping i do not uh, i cannot guarantee i can send uniformly every doping element to each lattice site nobody can guarantee no matter how precision your synthesis technique is is it mm-hmm. not Mm-hmm. the moment you are not conform or convince with your doping method you can you cannot clearly break the uh, generate the band gap which is sufficient enough to generate uh, to uh, to prevent its topology from the collapse at high enough temperature are you getting my point because it has already a conducting surface state so that conducting surface state has to interact very strongly with your magnetic dopant then only there will be an op- open of a very big gap then only you can have proportionately high enough temperature are you getting my point so so, so you are saying that unless the dopant that you are introducing into the lattice uh, distributes itself uniformly you cannot have uh, the topological insulator condition you cannot have a magnetic topological insulator which have high sustainability temperature okay okay right this is one problem second problem people came up with an idea of why don't you form a sandwich you like this you put a ferromagnet here like ndfeb ndfeb this is a topological insulator let's say bismuth telluride mm-hmm. so there also people could not come up with a desirable temperature because the interaction between the conducting surface state okay if this is my topological insulator this bulk is insulating but the surface is conducting na mm-hmm. so this conducting surface state and this magnetic interaction right on the surface doesn't talk to each other really in a nice mode mm-hmm. they don't like each other okay so if the interaction is not strong you cannot have a very big gap there also mm-hmm. people could not successfully uh, manage to enhance the uh, operating temp- high enough operating temperature so these are the problems so the only way one can really look out for this kind of feature is to check whether there is a material which is topologically non trivial but also possess some magnetic order are you getting my point intrinsically so and fortunately they found one mnbi2 te4 but they have doped it with selenium so mnbi2 te4 this is topological magnetic insulator 
it's only material discovered so far mm -hmm. and people have been playing around with this and this is a magnetic coil semi metal which i will not get into it's a little uh, this, a higher concept so this is these are the four options so first people have realized this as i was explaining m and v to t4 so they said this is topological insulator they put the magnetic material up and down and they doped, doped it with this with heavily doped it with this or interleave the different layer these are four different choice have been given to the experimentalist to check which one is giving rise to the highest band gap and correspondingly high enough operating temperature but mm -hmm. nothing has turned out to be the uh, uh, successful one or the right choice instead the intrinsic magnetic topological insulator are the best one so that's what the search is going where search is going on people are desperate to come up with something new material which will have the higher because this quantum anomalous hall effect right now the latest news is just 10 kelvin maximum otherwise you register just in milli kelvin so once you realize quantum anomalous hall state at room temperature at least it will be a revolutionary discovery revolution in condensed matter physics mm -hmm. so that's what uh, at least uh, we are trying in IOP. So these are the different material people have proposed and they try to check experimentally, but uh, still MNBI to T4 stands tall. Something around uh, 50K, but not uh, liquid nitrogen also. Okay. So these are the uh, material selection, how to select the material. So, um, topological magnet with high QD temperature or hard magnet favorable for anomalous hall effect, low dimensional crystal to enhance the spin orbit coupling to preserve the topology at high enough temperature. And this is non collinear spin structure like Kagam lattices. These are the different features. Uh, as an experimentalist, you should have to take into consideration before you choose the material. And uh, this is what uh, we are trying to achieve or at least if we can successfully reach the liquid nitrogen 77k that also will be very much useful mm -hmm. okay. so so are you so are you aiming for the room temperature at iop uh, yeah, that's what actually ultimate aim is but mm -hmm. i do not know how much successful we will become uh, sir was telling you instead work on uh, uh, what is that called? Oxide material like peroxide, AB, AB2O3 kind of compound. Mm -hmm. That PhD student uh, has been assigned to uh, similar kind of work, but uh, I don't see him going in the right direction. But mm -hmm. let's see. Okay. It will be well and good if you can synthesize single crystal. Mm -hmm. But there is no option uh, of uh, synthesizing a single crystal in IOP because we do not have lab facility okay so pld we will have so at max we can synthesize the heterostructure or multi-layer okay let's see but this is this is a very ambitious project okay. it will best make famous overnight <laughs> sure, not to fact. me not to me because being a phd student he, he his, his ultimate goal is to come up with something which is publishable at least mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good luck. Best wishes. Thank you. Thank you. Your best luck is uh, uh, very much required. <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh, so, to, please, and anybody has any questions? Ab, abhi, abhi kisi or ki koi push questions hai? Hina, Richard, kisi ki push questions yeah, hai? Yeah, please. I have a lot of questions. 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 So, that's why you are here. <laughs> Uh, actually like quantum hall effect okay okay so hall effect do you know no okay hall effect thoda 12th mein thoda sa batate hain uske bare mein matlab maybe itna zyada details nahi lekin thoda sa batate hain jitna mujhe yaad hai ha okay okay theek hai theek hai okay okay sir see by definition by definition, it says you just take a current carrying conductor, current carrying conductor, like say copperware, 
place it in a perpendicular magnetic field and you will end up with a transverse voltage difference which is perpendicular to both the direction of current as well as to the magnetic field okay you, you have you have studied it but very unfortunately maybe you are a bit inclined to biology that's why you have forgotten so uh, and the mechanism responsible for uh, the realization of this effect is lorentz force you know lorentz force f equal to q yes, v yes, cross b yes uh -huh. it's a combination of both electric and magnetic both. force yes but uh, it was the story something around 1878 1879 so after 100 years another physicist uh, uh, named von kleging in 1980 so what he did he took actually two dimensional two semiconductor okay the so two semiconductor you sandwich one over another you form a sandwich so their interface will be ultra clean mm -hmm. and that in in advanced physics term, it is known as two-dimensional electron gas. Okay? Mm -hmm. Interface. Mm -hmm. So he, what he did, he put it in a very strong magnetic field in a perpendicular way at a very low enough temperature. Let's suppose at 2 Kelvin, 1 Kelvin, or milli Kelvin is now realized around 2000, but that time it was not available. And the field mm -hmm. he introduced was 30 Tesla by capacitor discharge method. So, uh, what you, uh, please, please ask me. The field 30 Tesla. 30 Tesla around. Okay. Stronger the field, closer will be the orbit. Okay. If, if you study a bit uh, advanced physics, let's say graduation physics, you will get to know about quantum physics. And in quantum physics, uh, you will get to learn if you place an electron or, or or a material where there are enough free electron, let's say conductor, perpendicular to magnetic field, electron orbit will quantize. That's known as Landau quantization. Because Lipschitz, uh, that uh, led Landau, the physicist from Russia, he discovered this effect, theoretically predicted. So if you can see Bohr orbit, you know, electron about the nucleus, so you can, if you see the figure number B, if, if you can see, look at my cursor. So there is a strong magnetic field along Z direction. This is the AB plane or a BC plane, this is a XY plane. And here, the electron in the middle of the semiconductor interface, they're actually forming a closed orbit, right? These orbit are known as Landau orbit quantization. But at the edge, due to the geometrical restriction, the completion of, of orbit could not occur. Thereby, mm. they simply try to complete, but could not. Thereby, they ended up with a skipping orbit. This orbit is known as skipping orbit. Understood? Mm. Mm. So this orbit is, is sorry. Orbit orbit is quantized means uh, orbit is quantized means. Mm. It electron can only resides in a particular orbit of a definite energy. Okay. Huh. It cannot have a continuous orbit or uh -huh. a random energy. Uh -huh. Okay. It comes from two features. Uh, one is its very small dimension. Another one is confinement. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is the essential requirement to realize the quantum feature. So, mm -hmm. this effect in total is known as integer quantum hall effect because if you have studied the high school physics the resistivity or conductivity is associated with the material dimension so if mm -hmm. rho is my resistivity how does it related to resistance rho equal to r, r, by r. r yes so essentially you are relating to the dimension mm -hmm. but here he realized something which is independent of dimension okay mm -hmm. So this effect is known as integer quantum Hall effect because conductivity was quantized in terms of integer and was independent of material dimension. So that actually had him a Nobel Prize in 1985. Okay. okay, for you, I think this much will be okay. If you want to learn more, you can search Google or in, in our later discussion, we can ask. 
and what are fermions fermions like fermion are something uh, which uh, respect fermi dirac statistics okay means like our electron uh, who else quarks Hmm. And and uh, <coughs> photons are boson because they respect Bose-Einstein statistics. Higgs yeah. boson, na you might be knowing in uh, known as God particle. God, God particle. Higgs Higgs boson. Higgs boson. Okay. अच्छा वो कभी और किस तरह ठीक है मतलब एक एक उसके बारे में भी बता सकते हैं फिर ठीक है एक एक तो उसके बारे में रखते हैं कि आखिर मतलब वो कि जो वो डिस्करेंट हिग्स वाली उसका मीनिंग क्या है और मतलब जैसे आ, क्योंकि वो उस बारे में है कि आ, जैसे ये आ, पार्टिकल फिजिक्स वाला आइडिया है कि वहाँ पे जो गेज फील्ड उनको मास कैसे मिलता है तो उसको अच्छा हिग्स तो हिग्स में क्या निज्म बोलता है नहीं नहीं वो सब ये सब नहीं हम्म तो 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 ज़्यादा इंटरेस्टेड फिजिक्स में में लग रहे हैं जितने बायोलॉजी नहीं नहीं आई नहीं, वो तो अगले टॉक से पता चलेगा ना हाँ, ओके ओके ठीक है ओके तो देन 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 इट्स ए मल्टी डायमेंशनल तो अगला तो अब अगली टर्म हिना की है है ना ठीक हाँ, हाँ, तो, तो है अगले संडे स्टूडेंट कोशिश करने वालों की हाँ, की हमेशा से से यही यही पूछती आई कैसे होता है क्या होता है कैसे होता है कुछ 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 और मेक मेक यू एनीवन डिफरेंट फ्रॉम रेस्ट